We watched the entire interview when Regina Ward sat down and had a discussion hours before the hearing. There was a clip in Regina Ward's interview where she said that JP had contact with Micah the day that she died. Because of her accent, I initially thought she said that he made content with Micah, not contact with her. And that's why I had this reaction. <laughs> uh. But after I realized my mistake in editing and was heavily relieved, it got people thinking like, wait a minute, he had contact with Micah the day that she died? So she sat down and clarified her statement. So we're gonna watch a clip of that in a moment. However, oh my gosh, guys, I was watching this video. I think it was literally about the Kardashians because I have a guilty pleasure of watching like T channels. Let's not get into that today. I kid you not, I screen recorded it. Okay, I'm watching this video and I scrolled down down and what does the first comment say it talks about lithium why is lithium important in this case well if you've been following along at any point then you would know that mica was prescribed lithium now lithium can be very dangerous if it's not prescribed correctly if people that aren't supposed to be using it use it could not believe that i wasn't even looking for anything mica related nothing about lithium nothing to do with this case and i saw this comment and i I knew I had to share it with you guys to give you a little bit of an idea of where Micah may have been mentally during all of this. I still to this day don't know for sure if I believe that she committed suicide or not. A lot of it still doesn't make sense to me and that's why I continue to make videos because I'm hoping that the more people speak, the more will come forward. If you've ever been wrongfully medicated with lithium, please, please, please take a minute to understand this tactic has been used since the 1950s and continues today with young girls across the country. Micah was not medicated until she met JP. I believe it was the sister Anna or Anna that uh, talked about this in her interview that Micah showed no signs of severe mental illness until she met JP and was prescribed lithium. So continuing on with this comment, my grandmother was placed on lithium after a miscarriage. Her postpartum depression was misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder. It completely destroyed my family. I was also misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder and immediately placed on lithium at 13 years old. I gained 20 pounds in one month and literally thought I was going insane because of the lithium. We need a worldwide reform of child and female psych psychiatric medicine it is destroying us I thought that was really really fascinating because if Micah was prescribed lithium and maybe she would not need lithium maybe she was just showing signs of completely my opinion I'm just speculating here but I'm wondering Micah's affair was found out about she went through the separation with her husband and although she had JP to sort of fall back on emotionally I think it took a really big toll on Micah and not even necessarily just because morally it probably wasn't the best thing to do but you also have to consider that Micah has been in the church allegedly since about 13 years old we saw some articles from my last video talking about that so this poor girl I feel was so stressed out trying to be a godly woman a godly wife she may have fallen into a deep depression I believe JP may have even spoken to the doctors I believe JP himself was on lithium so said oh this is what you need to take I don't think JP himself is is very healthy mentally so I'm starting to fall into the theory where I still don't believe Micah is at fault entirely for her own death I feel like she was coerced I feel like she was blackmailed but I also feel like she was almost drugged in a way because she was given lithium and it started putting her in a really unhealthy state and who is gonna see it the most and see you most often but your spouse her sisters probably saw Micah starting to back away a little Little bit but it, it, it her sister seemed so sweet that they were like listen this is my older sister you know she's still around I don't feel like Micah was only facing depression then I think she was given the wrong um, psychiatric medication and then on top of it she started getting isolated from her support system 
not only from her sisters, but also from the people from the church, because you have to keep in mind that JP started writing out checks to hire people to watch Micah. So I feel like she was, she felt like she was also lo losing her support system in the church and therefore started pushing her into a deeper depression because where do you really go? If she's not even communicating with her sisters, I highly doubt she's telling anybody else how she's really feeling. JP alleged that there was a friend who came out after Micah died and said that, oh, Micah told me years ago, by the way, that if she ever wanted to commit suicide, that she was gonna choose a Lumber River State Park. But I decided not to tell anybody. That friend who allegedly said this, have they even come out to say, that's a big, if someone says that about me and it wasn't true, I think that they would come out and say either yes I said that or no I didn't. I just thought the comment about lithium was interesting. Again, Regina Ward misspoke about JP having contact with Micah on the day that she died. Regina had served JP the day that Micah had died with the divorce papers, so she can't imagine that JP would not then go and like blow Micah up and stuff. So we're gonna watch this quick clip. I will link the full video down below because there's a few things that they cover. First, they're just gonna talk about how they kind of came to this global settlement. What is a global settlement? Abigail Miller was an absolute joy to listen to, so I'll link her interview down below as well. Highly recommend going to check it out. She was an absolute doll. The hearing was gaveled to order. It was very quickly announced that a global settlement had been reached in this case and for those of you we've had a lot of folks ask us what you know what's the deal what's the difference between a settlement and a global settlement you know how does that work exactly well a settlement is typically involving one particular case or potential case uh, and it usually involves one party and another party a global settlement involves multiple cases or potential cases and multiple parties so the settlement that was reached on Monday, between the family of Micah Miller and John Paul Miller and his church, the Solid Rock at Mark Common Church in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, was a global settlement involving all members of the Francis family, Micah Miller's family, John Paul Miller, and the church. So not only all parties, but Jen, also all potential actions. And I think, Jen, you've got a clip. Uh, Andy Fancher, our, our reporter, was with us. At Myrtle Beach, he got great footage of everything that transpired. I think we've got a clip from the press conference. Is that correct? Is that what we're going to run with first? Yep, we're going to start with that one. One second. Let's see if we can't take a look at this clip from that press conference. This is one of the lawyers for John Paul Miller speaking uh, about the settlement. Uh, today, John Paul Miller, Solid Rock Church, Inc., and the estate of Micah Francis Miller, along with individual members of the Francis family, have reached a full and final settlement on all presently filed litigation. The parties have also signed a full mutual release on all potential future litigation. The terms of the settlement agreement are sealed under a confidentiality agreement. The agreement and release include but are not limited to the dismissal with prejudice of the matters currently pending in both family court and probate court of Warren County. You just witnessed in court the, the withdrawal of the petition in, in probate court. Um, Micah's family, Pastor Miller, and the church have set their differences aside to allow Micah's memory to live on without the encumbrance of contentious litigation. That's Russell Long. That's one of uh, John Paul Miller and Solid Rock's attorneys. He claimed that all of the criminal investigations into John Paul Miller were at an end. In fact, I specifically pressed him on this during the press conference. I asked him, you know, hey, wait a minute, you didn't specify an agency. You very carefully did not mention federal investigations. So we pushed him on that a little bit, but he claimed that all these investigations are done. Um, yeah, and I keep telling people to pay attention to how he phrased it because he was very deliberate in his wording when he said that. Um, and then, you know, it implied that, you know, we reached out and, you know, asked if the investigations were still ongoing. These two talk a little bit about people being so upset about Micah's family and JP reaching a settlement. There were lots of people on social media saying their opinion, which is totally valid. I feel like they were kind of put in a really tough position where the decision that they made didn't necessarily close the book on this uh, case at all. But they are gonna talk a little bit about people's reaction to the settlement and maybe why they actually came to this settlement. When Sierra Francis filed 
initially it was to become special administrator of her estate and that is something that they wanted to do to ensure that Micah's phone and Apple Watch came back to them because that I think is going to give them the most answers regarding her last day, her last moments. And that was agreed to, I believe it was in May. Um, but then what they wanted to do was to put um, Sierra Francis as the personal representative of the estate because they wanted to be, you know, proceed with that divorce filing and separation of assets. Um, so really, you know, when you look at it, the probate court statute says that, you know, if you are not legally legally divorced and you die without a will, as, as Micah did, your next of kin is still your spouse. Um, and that, you know, it is the statute, it is law, and they could have fought that, but that is how South Carolina law is currently written. So that was going to be an uphill battle. And if they did file a civil lawsuit for wrongful death or you know they had there had been claims that she had been grossly underpaid working for the church all of you know any settlement or wins in a civil lawsuit would go back to John Paul Miller as the beneficiary of her estate so it really was they were in a really tight tough position with a lot of difficult decisions to make. So now we're gonna get into some of the statements that Regina made in her interview and what they have to say about that. While we talk about this press conference, one of the, the comments that we kept getting, uh, this was a joint press conference, one of uh, Regina Ward, we mentioned we're gonna to get to her in just a second. We interviewed her this week, uh, sat down with her extensively, but a lot of folks were upset about this statement that folks should stop protesting solid Rock Church, because obviously the protests at this church have been a big part of the story. In fact, there have actually been criminal charges filed against one of the church members for, for spraying these protesters with a, a sprinkler. But I wanted to read this. Sierra Francis uh, took to Facebook just last night. Uh, we're, we're airing this on a, a Friday uh, morning. She took to Facebook Thursday night and posted something that was uh, appears to be on behalf of the family, it talks about uh, she's with Michael Francis and several other members of the family, but she made something uh, pretty clear. Uh, one thing circulating that we definitely want to make everyone aware of, Russell Long does not legally represent the Francis family. And she's referring to the attorney that we just watched who made these statements. Uh, we stand behind our legal representation, uh, who was carefully selected and continues to do an amazing job helping us navigate this impossible situation. She also said, after court, there was a joint statement made. We did not know anyone's intended words until they were spoken. That said, we have not asked protesters to protest or to refrain from it. We encourage everyone to follow their convictions within the law. She also said that while we've reached a legally sealed settlement, quote, our journey is far from over. It's funny because during the press conference when um, Russell Long did say that I was standing right next to Anna Francis, who I interviewed. Um, and okay, it's Anna. I just, Anna Francis. Got it. We did not say that. I mean, she was very upset. And, you know, like if, if you've been watching uh, Micah's sisters, they are, they are some strong women. Yeah, it's a strong crew. That's a strong crew for sure. Um, and getting to meet that family, um, just incredibly gracious folks after all they've been through. Can't imagine what it must be like. But uh, we're going to talk in just a minute. We sat down with one of the members of the Francis family. But Jen, before we get to that, I wanted to ask you, we're going to start diving into this interview with Regina Ward. Uh, first of all, I wanted you've got a clip ready for us from that interview. Um, he made comments that he sent emails to her on the same day that she died and then realized that there were two that she probably didn't get. So, yeah. Just some really, you know, I do think in terms of, you know, when Micah left her house, her apartment that day, she was dressed for work. Um, she left with just enough time to get to her shift. And I've always said, you know, something happened. She had left her apartment with just enough time to get to work, dressed for work but then instead goes to a pawn shop and literally takes off the collared shirt that she had just put on 
I figured something had to have happened between her getting in the car and heading to Dick's pawn shop. The trajectory of her day, and I think that answer to that, I think she's right, is going to be on her phone or her Apple Watch. And I think that is going to be, you know, the best chance that the Francis family has of, of learning what happened that day. Oh, we need this they... Apple Watch. We need it. We need it. We need it so bad. I think as soon as we get a hold of that Apple Watch, unless something has been tampered with, we're going to see some sort of communication. That is huge. I think that's all they've ever yeah. wanted is answers. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was one of the I think, okay, so that has to be a huge, I don't mean, I, I, I just want to input because again, this is their content. This is my content. Oh my gosh. Could that be what JP was like trying so desperately to get into the apartment for to get her Apple watch? I hope to goodness that once they can get their hands on that Apple watch, I, I don't hope for any of this. I want justice. I want answers. You know, what's also strange. I'm still stuck. I'm stuck on this little detail for some reason where JP was talking about um, he did that interview with what's his face the guy that charged like two bucks he's a content creator for the private interview oh my gosh I don't even remember his name fly daddy fly daddy boy is <laughs> sorry no flow daddy flow I knew it. <laughs> but he did ask JP why he went into the apartment and although I don't think JP was going to be honest JP said that you know, she had, I think, a Bible and a sweatshirt that was important. Oh, and he talks about a little necklace that if you looked inside of the necklace, it was a little naked photo of JP. Most likely, where are nude photos going to be if someone has possession of them on a phone? You, you, you were telling me that you were married to this woman for what, almost a decade and you don't have any nude photos of each other? Okay. But you didn't say anything about wanting to get like your pictures back off of her laptop or like phone or anything obviously because that would look suspicious but isn't that most likely where your like intimate photos would be? I don't think I'd be that worried about a necklace. Interesting. Since we reported on the global settlement and the aftermath of it there was obviously as we mentioned a lot of uh, negative reaction to that settlement uh, from from various corners, but one of the questions that we kept getting was, does the settlement in any way impact the ability of Regina Ward to receive uh, that phone and that watch? I, I actually reached out to her this week and posed that question directly to her. She said, quote, that does not change. In other words, she will still receive that information, and obviously that would be a big part of help and find answers to yeah and they exactly. do have that court order and she said you know they keep submitting it to the robeson county sheriff's department who did the initial investigation to make sure that you know it comes back to them and they they keep saying that the investigation is still ongoing and they can't provide it so one other thing that we wanted to clear up there were some folks that watched that interview with Regina Ward, by the way, it's on Fitz News YouTube. You can probably scroll over and check it out now if you want. But one of the things in that interview that was mentioned, Attorney Ward made a comment about serving John Paul Miller, quote, that day. Yeah, okay. And a lot of folks have been questioning whether or not that meant he was served on the day that Mike and Miller died. And if so, how does that impact his? his alibi and so I did reach out to attorney Ward. we talked about this and she did clarify that no in fact uh, the day she was referring to was the day he was served on Thursday uh, 45 hours before mm -hmm. Michael Miller died in fact we've got the certificate of okay. uh, the affidavit of the individual who served John Paul Miller with those papers that specifically says it happened at 5 38 p.m. on Thursday the 25th uh, of April which would be 45 hours before the 911 call from Lumber River State Park. Um, oh, this is getting so aggravating. I think honestly the girls, the Francis sisters, came to this global settlement because if they didn't and fought and kept this case going with JP, they had a chance to lose the ability to see the communication, the, the Apple Watch, the cell phone, the messages, and all that. Possibly their only chance of getting a hold of this Apple Watch eventually when... How can you withhold... Is there any, like, law... There's got to be some changes made, but is there are there any laws where you can only hold 
evidence for so long before like every party needs to get a, a chance at it. So we're clarifying that he was not he was not served the day that she died that Saturday. However, he was served that Thursday before. So I would love to see the communication within those 48 hours between him and Micah. Now, did Micah work the day prior? You know, was she at work on Friday? Was she at work on Thursday, the day that he was served? But then JP, two days after being served divorce papers, goes... And, uh, and he's at his soccer tournament. Okay, we're gonna end it there because we did watch Abby's interview. Again, I'll link that down below. She was an absolute joy to watch, a real pleasure of an interview. They are throwing, I believe, a concert benefit from Micah because she was even saying some of the community down there doesn't even know. And that's why I continue to talk about it because if their community doesn't know what's going on, please go ahead and leave a like if you enjoyed. Also, you can subscribe if you don't wanna miss any new videos. And I'll see you in my next one.